break, lakeside oral, facial and dental implant surgery, and by Feltner's Athletes Corner. Cyclones Live each Tuesday evening from 7 until 8 on River Country KCJC. Brought to you by Tyson Foods. Keep it real. Keep it Tyson. Welcome everyone. We're at the Old Bank Sports Grill, and uh, we're uh, we got uh, one hour to talk about some cyclone football. We're joined by Jeff Weaver, ex football coach of the Russell Cyclones. Welcome, coach. Hi, great to be here. Uh, we got a couple guests. Uh, we run through all the seniors, so we got yeah. a couple guests uh, later. It's going to be a couple coaches for us, uh, uh -huh. Coach Weaver, and Coach Tucker. So, uh, but I want to start the the show. Uh, I was going to mention this later. I'm going to go ahead and start it. Uh, I want to wish a happy birthday to Coach David Beal. Uh, today's his birthday, and uh, cool. I, I, the one of the most exciting things that happened two weeks ago at the home game at junior highs, I saw him in the stands. Yeah, he's made it to a couple of games, and um, uh, two weeks ago looked really, really good. And of course, he's fired up to see the the junior high having the success they're having, and and that sort of thing. And I know uh, he's on their minds; they're playing for him uh, very, very hard. Coach Tucker and his staff have them doing a great job, and we're. Uh, excited about what they've accomplished yeah and they got a big game big game thursday night yep. that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later i want to talk first about the uh, game last week mm -hmm. um uh, all kidding aside uh, have you ever seen the wind affect so much Boy, <laughs> seven yard punt uh, yeah. have you ever seen a seven yard punt you know that's what we felt in the in the third quarter uh we had the wind to our back and felt like get a stop and get another negative punt and put us in great position mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing but unable to get that accomplished but the the wind was certainly uh, a factor. Uh, you know, we, we felt like we could pin them deep when we had the wind to our back. And I was honestly a little bit worried with their speed um, and our ability to punt. I was really kind of worried when we were punting that we were going to out punt what we could cover, you mm -hmm. know. And it, it's not often that you're, you're worried that you're going to kick the ball too far. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, you know, I think it pushed a field goal wide for us. I think um, – I think it definitely affected the passing game for both teams, but uh, uh, boy, what a lot of what a lot of speed and talent they had on the field. Um, that that was a, an impressive looking group of, of young men from Parkview last week. Yeah, I remember uh, I was talking to Coach Tucker. We brought up off the air. We we talked about James Rouse uh, that mm -hmm. came up, but I remember. Uh, going to an Arkansas-Texas game when James Rouse was playing for the Hogs, and there was a zero-yard punt by Texas. They snapped it from inside their own 10, and it was a bad punt against the wind, and it bounced backwards. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's the shortest punt I've ever weird seen. Weird side note to that, I believe that was my second cousin that punted that ball. Oh, really? I think it was for Bobby, Texas, Bobby Liljadal uh, punted for uh, Texas um, – and, yeah, I, okay. I'm afraid all I right. was related to that guy. <laughs> the, Texas yeah. ended up winning 21-14. It well, seemed all like right. always they, they they got us close games, especially when that, when Hatfield was there. Uh, on the punting, one more thing. Ben Hallmark's done a really good job for you since Absolutely. he's come in. Absolutely. I think he's done a great job uh, stepping in there. He can, he can one-step punt the ball and has an explosive leg, uh, enables um, Wheelist to focus a little more on the place kicking and that sort of thing. And, and uh, it's always good to have a quarterback back there, um, you know, if you want to do something with the punt team. So I, I think he's done an excellent job. Uh, I hate the what do you think about or, or just, you know, those type of questions. But I'm going to ask this. Caleb Gray, what can you say about Caleb Gray? He set the uh, career yeah. interceptions, and yeah. that's just fantastic. You know, uh, I, I wasn't even thinking about it or looking for it. And when he intercepted it, uh, I didn't see him break in there. But uh, real quick, I figured out who had the ball. And and I said into the headset, guys, Caleb just set the set the record, mm -hmm. and uh, what a what a cool thing for him. And, and typical of Caleb, uh, I think it might have been Saturday or may, maybe even been Sunday. But he he put together a group text of all the all the coaches from seventh all the way up through twelfth uh, on a group text, uh, and said, hey, I just wanted to thank you guys and and that sort of thing for coaching and. And, and working with me and, and that sort of thing and giving us much of the credit. And, of course, we don't, we don't deserve any of that credit. That's Caleb being, being Caleb. Well, you know, you know, he was tied with Steiger and Tryon, and Tryon had 10 in one season. Uh -huh. And that's, it's hard to do over a three-year period because I think he intercepted six his sophomore year because people start throw, stop throwing at Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I coached a kid that, that intercepted um, either eight or nine in a season his junior year. In his senior year, he had one. Mm -hmm. And, and – they just threw away from him all the time. And, and you know, uh, and Caleb, while we've had good defense, um, we he has done it um, at, at a time where, you know, this year we're not getting 
just bukus of sacks and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. He he covers. Mm-hmm. He 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 covers kids up and he'll bait quarterbacks into throwing, thinking a guy's open, and then there's Caleb, which is basically what happened mm-hmm. Friday night in his interception. It's just a smart player, uh, really good kid, and and proud of him to hold that record. Yeah, and congratulations to him. Um, Parkview uh, mm-hmm. uh, did not play Greenwood Lake Hamilton. Right. Because, uh, how do you compare them to both those teams? Well, I think Greenwood would probably uh, run them off the field, and I think they'd – I feel like they would beat Lake Hamilton because I I think their speed, um, Lake Hamilton's Achilles is speed on defense, and and I think that would be a real problem for them. And, and what people might not realize, Parkview is extremely physical. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I view them that way. Now they did play Benton, uh, lost by ten, I believe, but they had been quarantined for two weeks before that game and. I know they felt like that was uh, a big hindrance to them. I feel like if they played Benton uh, ten times, that that might go f- five and five. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a talented football team um, that uh, we were unable to to get loose and put pressure on them uh, when we needed to. Um, they're extremely talented. I like asking questions like that because you pretty much nailed the Greenwood Benton game. Oh, uh, yeah. Last week. yeah. I mean, you, I, you called it. I, that uh, one could have been worse as well. Benton scored late. Um, somebody, one of the one of the uh, Greenwood coaches asked me how I thought Benton and Lake Hamilton would go this weekend. And, um, you know, I, I picked Benton in that one. Okay. Uh, one more question before we go to a break. How is the health of our team? We got a couple of guys beat up. Uh, we, we got some dinged up today, you know. Um, but at this point in the season, going into week nine, uh, we got two extremely important weeks, mm-hmm. um, and um, you know everybody's giving it their best shot and and that sort of thing. I I think we will dress most everybody. There's there's one that I'm not going to name that we're really really concerned about, but um, I know he'll be out there if he can, and and that's what uh, we're hoping to see. Okay. Uh, we're going to take a break. we come back. We'll talk a little bit about Mountain Home at some point. I don't, sure. don't want to say that in case, in case you might want to eat first. <laughs> uh, we will have a couple of uh, uh, guests with the Coach Weedmeyer and Coach Tucker later. You're listening to uh, Cyclones Live. We're live at the Old Bank Sports Grill here on 102.3. Thanks for listening to this EAB station for your football. This broadcast would not be possible without the support of our local sponsors like Tyson Foods. Today's Cyclone Live is exclusively sponsored by Tyson Foods. Keep it real. Keep it Tyson. Whether you're listening in your car, online, or on your phone, no matter how you hear the broadcast, we're proud to be your home for the best in live football. And the next time you're at the store, remember our partners at Tyson Foods. Keep it real. Keep it Tyson. If you love quality pizza, none of Bell is Pizzeria at 717 South Arkansas will be your new favorite place. The dough and sauces are made daily with only the freshest and highest quality ingredients. Nana Bella's has added many new toppings to meet our customers' discerning tastes. For the most original and fresh pizza in Russellville, remember Nana Bella's Pizzeria. We're currently open for delivery and takeout. Order online at nanabellas2go.com or call 479-317-1034. Felner's Athletes Corner, your high-performance athletic store for quality athletic footwear and apparel, features Nike, Under Armour, The North Face, Patagonia, Oakley, Saucony, New Balance, Brooks, Asics, Kabu, Keen, and many, many more. Felner's invites you to make them your first stop. With more than 50 years combined, experience the familiar faces at Felner's and help you with all your athletic needs. Felner's Athletes Corner, 2320 West Main, Russellville, open 930 until 6, Monday through Saturday. Hey, it's Drew Mitchell for Lakeside Oral Facial and Dental Implant Surgery. Lakeside is really proud this year to be sponsoring our local sports all throughout the River Valley. They're committed to the area. It's just another way they show that. When you're in the market for dentures, wisdom teeth, or whatever the case may be, remember Lakeside Oral Facial and Dental Implant Surgery and check out their website at lakesideofs.com. Lakeside Oral Surgery, helping make the broadcast of local sports throughout the River Valley possible. 
Joshua's Fine Jewelry, your locally owned, family owned luxury jewelry establishment in the heart of downtown Russellville, is having a really wonderful watch sale right now. 50% off all in stock citizen watches now until October 1st. That means Rose Gold, Eco Drive, 50% off. Preview some of these amazing citizen watches by following Joshua's Fine Jewelry on Facebook and Instagram or shop online at joshuasfinejewelry.com. How many times have you had to go without your heating? or your air unit when you needed it most. Your family's freezing or sweating and they look to you for relief. You call someone and they say it's going to cost an arm and a leg to fix. Do you really feel like you have a choice? Well, now you do. Call Tony at Arkansas River Valley Heating and Air at 479-964-4004 for a free second opinion from a guy you can trust to take care of you and your family and get that unit running without all the extra charges. Arkansas River River Valley Heating and Air. Welcome back. We're at the Old Bank Sports Grill. This is Cyclones Live. We're here till 8 o'clock uh, talking about some Cyclone football. And our first guest is uh, Coach Jake Weedmeyer. Welcome to the show, Coach. Thank you. Pleasure yeah. to be here. Uh, Coach Weedmeyer teaches math in my building just down the hallway, but we hardly ever see each other. We just have to yell at each other. Yeah, it's one of those that I'm heading one way and you're heading the other most of the day. Yeah. And I, I think math teachers are the, the smartest anyway, so we best teachers well, probably make the best coaches I, I can uh, definitely agree with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you coach I coach the offensive line okay and you also coach shot put shot put and disc okay uh track it now in you went to high school at Valonia sorry about that <laughs> um the uh, did you do track and field there also yes I was a shot putter and discus thrower for them from ninth grade all the way up to my senior year where we won state uh, but I was also a baseball player in ninth grade and tenth grade. Okay. And then we had a problem where I'm shot putting a throw down to second and had to make a decision. <laughs> so I went to track. <laughs> now you were affected too uh, by the COVID because you had you weren't able to uh, really work with your guys and you didn't really get to say bye to your team uh, yeah. before, when all that happened. Uh, I had a good group of senior throwers mm -hmm. that were heading to Cersei. I get a phone call. Hey, track has been canceled. Mm -hmm. I have one last practice with them, and then uh, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Didn't even get a chance to really say goodbye and say good luck to the seniors, and that that was really heartbreaking. Yeah, there was a bowler on the team too. I think she was um, she was also a shot put or mm -hmm. discus or something like that. Uh, Hallie. Yeah, Hallie Thomas. Yeah, so that that was that's terrible for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of interested in uh, how everybody was able to handle that. Um, you played at Bologna. Went to UCA. Did you play at UCA also? No, I had a couple preferred walk-on tryouts but the problem was I really messed up my ankle my senior year and that kind of hindered me I was trying out to be a deep snapper and it seemed like every time I tried out there was a guy they signed from JUCO okay so the the gigantic UCA flag that you have in your classroom should bother me because I'm old enough where I went to tech UCA was a rival but now <laughs> they're not you know they're not even they used to be in the same conference used I don't know to be. yeah the old AIC um, the I hear this is just some random stuff I got. I don't know if it's true or not. I hear you're a terrible driver. Oh, I don't know who said that one. Okay. Um, this may or may not be people in our building um, that uh, you do custom wood projects too. Yes, my father is a shop teacher at Conway High School. Uh, every winter months, like getting real close to this time of year, Dad and I will start making butcher block cutting boards. Uh, sell them for like 25 to 35 dollars we work it on a bandsaw to where it's in the shape of arkansas we've done a couple texas michigan uh, missouri and the biggest one i've seen him do was germany oh really and he swore to never do that one again <laughs> how come just it was just a lot of weird angles that he didn't really <laughs> want to do again the teacher that teaches next to you said you did one for her in the state of alabama yes so alabama yeah she's yes. a big crimson tide fan and um, why do you hate the Razorbacks? Oh, man. Grew up, I was born on the campus of Mizzou. Okay. Uh, my mother was getting her doctorate degree there, and it wasn't a really big rivalry then. Mm -hmm. And right now it's starting to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but we moved when I was young to Kentucky, and I thought the worst thing in the world were Kentucky Wildcat fans. <laughs> Just awful. Especially basketball. Oh, you'd get there in football season, they'd be – Talking about basketball already. Mm -hmm. and Okay, so then we moved to South Carolina where my mom worked at USC. 
and that's really where we started disliking the Hogs. Really? Um, at yeah, South Carolina? Because mm-hmm, you had Hog fans that you would hear them calling the Hogs, and you're like, well, that is just not good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, lo and behold, we get here when I'm in third grade, and I have to hear about the Arkansas Racerbacks. And people are just going crazy. They're calling the hogs, and I'm still sitting here like, what, what, what is this? <laughs> and from then on, I've always just liked to stir the pot mm-hmm. and root against them. Okay. So. Uh, South Carolina and Arkansas went into the SEC in the same year. But I don't know if that's why they would. No, be I any mean, in South Carolina, you hate Clemson. Yeah. You you don't let friends wear orange is what I was taught to when growing up. Yeah, and uh, it's just weird. Dad's they, not a Hogs fan either. Really, uh, South Carolina and Clemson both have the the tree on their field. Mm-hmm, the palm tree. Yeah, the palm tree, and that's uh, I guess that's a state tree or maybe yes, a state that's flag. Yes, state tree. Okay, but one's in orange and one's in yeah. red. So. Um, so, okay, so you're a big Kansas City Chiefs and Royals fan. Why Kansas City? Is that because you were? When I was I was born up there, and I have family that we go visit every year. That's about an hour, hour and a half outside of Kansas City. Okay, so you're loving this being a Chiefs fan right oh, now. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. I've went through the the two and fourteen years. Now I get to finally enjoy what it feels like to be on top. See, I'm, I'm a big Pittsburgh fan, and their greatest quarterback, the Chiefs, used to be. The Pittsburgh guy and Lynn Dawson, but mm-hmm. now it's Patrick Mahomes. Yes. Yeah. Did you know he's going to be that good? I'd be lying if I said I did. <laughs> I knew he was going to be explosive. I mean, if you watched him at Texas Tech, he was able to th- make him brilliant plays, but then he'd always make that bonehead mistake. Yeah. He could never win the big game. Mm-hmm. Uh, him and Baker Mayfield got into a shootout where both of them threw for like 700 yards, and he ends up losing it. Mm-hmm. So I thought he'd – put up monster yards, but he's really grown under Andy Reid to be a great NFL quarterback. And he does some amazing things. You are getting married in the spring. I am. Yeah. I am kind of excited about that, but also, you know, that nervousness that Mm -hmm. sets in. And she's a teacher, but in a different district. Yeah, she teaches at Greenbrier Middle School. She's a literacy teacher. Okay. And, you know... She makes fun of me because I like to talk about numbers, and then she'll be over here giving us the theme of everything and the plot of all the stories, and I'm just like, get to the point. (laughs) (laughs) Math people are very cut and dry. This is this. This is that. Who's your favorite uh, kid that you coach in this year? Ooh, that is a tough one. I don't know if I can say that without getting – Yeah, I almost put this in my five questions, but I wasn't sure. I thought – I don't know if he would put him on the spot there. I have – I have nine guys on my varsity and 12 guys on my JV that I love coaching. Okay. Any chance you're going to move Narvison out as a wide receiver? Oh, you know. We have to ask this a lot. Cause Nar- Narv is we, – we've got plans for him. Okay. All right, you ready for five questions? I am. Okay. If I get the music going. Okay, here we go. Question one, who's a better golfer, you or your fiancé? Oh, it's me. No doubt. Uh, so she is she listening? She's not listening then. She may be listening. Okay. Y'all, y'all entered some couple tournaments together. We have. Uh, the first one we entered, we actually came first in our flight. Got some big money there. Okay. And the last one, uh, not so great. <laughs> uh, she carried me a little bit. I got. I ended up getting the shanks and couldn't hit it straight. Uh, if you have a good golfer on your in your, I mean, because they get such an advantage oh, yeah. teeing off from the red tees. Uh, question number two, I'm interested in this one. Who's your most hated team? Who? At what level? That's what I was gonna. I was just gonna say most hated team because I was wondering what level you would go. Uh, if it's high school, it's got to be Greenbrier. Grew up hating them, still hate them today. Uh, the college level, it's it's really close between. Alabama and Arkansas, and I'm going to keep the, the rivalry going. Mm-hmm. And then in the NFL, it's anybody in the AFC West that's not Kansas City. Okay. See, I thought I thought he's either going to say Greenbrier or he's going to say the Raiders. I didn't know what you would go there. Uh, the team I actually hate the most in the AFC West is Denver. Okay. Well, y'all got to win. Oh, yeah. They haven't beat us in 10 straight. I didn't realize that. Uh, question number three. Are the Chiefs based out of Kansas or Missouri? Oh, they are in the great state of Missouri. All right. And the right part of Kansas City. Okay. <laughs> Question. Isn't the – I thought the field was in Kansas. No. Okay. 
Question number four. With you being a Kansas City Chiefs fan, you're Kansas City Royals fan, how in the world are you a St. Louis Blues fan? Because I'm a Cardinals fan. I can't stand the Royals. <laughs> well, Kansas City doesn't have a hockey team. Okay. And But it doesn't bother you cheering for St. Louis? At this point, it's that Missouri pride. Okay. Uh, first off, most people don't like hockey, and I'm sitting here, and I really enjoy it. I love it. It's, yeah. it's one of the most entertaining playoff setting. I yeah. mean, they're going crazy. Yeah. And don't have one in Kansas City. All right, I'm going to root for the home team of our state. Yeah. Hockey's my favorite sport. It's, it's great. Uh, question five. How ugly is the purple field at UCA? Oh, see, I have mixed feelings about it. It is really hard on the eyes, mm -hmm. but they've had such a great record since they put it in. I mean, they went, I think it was three years without losing a game on the stripes. Mm. I so didn't realize that. It was, it was a great thing going on, and they're, they're still tough to beat on the stripes. Yeah. So it's ugly, but it works. It's hard to watch. That Boise State, I can't watch. It's just too, too tough. Uh, I think it's uh, Eastern Washington. Oh, that's that the red one. red one. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, Coach Jake Weimar. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're going to take a break, come back with more. You're listening to Cyclones Live at the Old Bank Sports Grill. like you would expect to treat family. Kubota has you covered. Construction equipment, farm equipment, zero-turn mowers. Go by today and see the family at River Valley Tractor, 702 Weir Road in Russellville. Call them today at 968-3795. That's 968-3795. For over 70 years, Old South Restaurant at 1330 East Main Street in Russellville has been faithfully serving the River Valley. Whether it's starting your day with a good old fashioned breakfast or helping you make it through the work day with a hearty home styled lunch and of course serving your family with a dinner that would even make your mama proud old south restaurants on main street in russellville we're here for you we're here for you so come on by old south hi this is danny hips general manager of phil rod autoplex and we know that some of our customers who buy from us because of our world-class brands chevrolet buick gmc and toyota but we are proud that a whole lot of our customers buy from us primarily because of our trustworthy people. And for the past 45 years, we've been earning that trust one vehicle at a time. Order your new vehicle today at philwright.com or come see us at 3300 East Main in Russellville. Because if you haven't bought from us lately, it's because you haven't shopped with us lately. So come see us. Arkansas Tire and Auto Service. We're more than just tires. Consistent, responsive, honest and fair. Arkansas Tire and Auto Service, 2304 East Main, Russellville. A solid roof for your business is key to keeping your employees, products, and valuables dry and clean. If you're experiencing roof leaks that are resulting in damaged equipment, stained ceilings, and walls, then don't let Mother Nature get the best of your business. The folks at ENF Roofing offer free commercial roof inspections, but their experience is priceless for your business. Not to lose productivity and extend the life of your roof. So contact ENF Roofing roofing today for a free commercial inspection at 479-272-4069. Taking care of families. That's what the folks at C&D Drugstore have been doing in historic downtown Russellville for more than six decades when it comes to all your pharmaceutical needs. When it comes to compounding special medicines, R.D. Walker and his staff are there to serve you. And most importantly, if you need delivery, if you need curbside pickup, you need C&D Drugstore on the corner of B and Commerce in downtown Russellville, a 60-year tradition. Welcome back to Cyclones Live. We're at the Old Bank Sports Grill talking some Cyclone football. And right now we're going to talk some whirlwind football. We're here with uh, Coach Mark Tucker, who's the defensive coordinator and the, uh, what do I call you, head coach? Do I call you interim head coach? What do I call you? <laughs> Well, anything you want, yeah. <laughs> call me coach. <laughs> uh, coach, uh, coach David Beal has been out this year, and you've been filling in as head coach, and I'm going to hit you with a tough one. 
I don't know if you'll be honest with me. So Thursday night, how nervous were you when you're down 12 to nothing and your offense hadn't been on the field yet uh, against Clarksville? Well, as a coach, you're a little concerned about that, you know, but I had the confidence in, in our offensive staff and Coach Young as our OC and, and our guys. If we got our hands on the football, we were going to score. Uh, I didn't expect it in one play. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when we, we stopped them and got the ball back and we went up 14-12, we felt real good about our chances. But, you know, we've got a great bunch of guys on the offensive line that just open some gaping holes for our backs and, and give uh, D.A. Reed some time to find some open receivers. So I was a little nervous, but, you know, I've been in that situation before, so I, I didn't overreact. Yeah, you got some great skill guys with Tracy Daniels and Caden Rose, and, but the offensive line is fantastic on your team. They are physical, and, you know, and that, that was a concern of ours when we went into the season of how physical and how good these guys could become. And it's not only just those five guys, but we've got some quality backups that's had to come in because of kids that have been quarantined because of COVID. And they've done a tremendous job. And, and all along, it's been riding their coattails. And our offense couldn't be as good without them. Yeah, and to explain people who weren't, uh, who weren't there, uh, Clarksville runs a very – boring offense and they were up 12 to nothing and it and we hadn't been on the field yet and uh, but one play I, I, I went after you guys got the balls one play you scored oh, it yeah. was electrifying yeah um and you guys are going for the conference championship thursday night against little rock christian that's and right. get to host it that's right that's yeah right. so i'm really excited about that uh, we're we're our kids are chomping at the bit to play yeah how uh how good is Little Rock? I mean, I know they're undefeated, but how good are they? Is it, do y'all run the same stuff? Are they wide open? They're they're similar to us. Uh, offensively, they go more through their quarterback. Uh, they'll go five wide and let him run the football. Uh, they'll RPO it. They'll they'll sprint him out, and he's got the option to throw a screen or run the football. Uh, he's a big young man. Uh, he's very fast. Uh, reminds me a lot, and some people will know this name, Matt Jones, that played for the Hogs. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's that quality of a player. Uh, they're good at the skill positions. They have a good running back. But the, everything goes through him, and, and they're a good football team. Uh, defensively, they're similar to us. They run a 3-4 scheme, and they'll do some things out of it like we do. But their linebackers, they're at number 21. He's just a really good inside linebacker. So we've been game planning to run, run at him at times, but in certain situations, but most time try to keep him away from us. It'll be the last home game of the season uh, and it's for the conference championship and it's at Cyclone Stadium so everybody needs to come out and, and tailgate as much as you can and and get there and uh, yell and scream and support our whirlwinds absolutely you've been I don't know if I got this the order right because I asked you before we went on but uh, so you've been the head coach at um, at Dover yes and then uh, assistant at Moralton yes head coach at Hector yes and then you went to Perryville? As the defensive coordinator. And then head coach at Paris? Yes. Okay, and then here to Russellville? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I decided to come back home. My children are here, mm -hmm. uh, and they're all grown, and my grandkids were here. And, and just even though I lived in Subiaco and it was 35 minutes away, with life and everything goes on, you don't get to see them as much. So I decided to move back here, and, and uh, this job opened up, and Coach Weaver uh, hired me, and, and I'm very grateful for that. And I've got – four of my grandchildren that are about five minutes away from me, so I get to see them quite a bit. Uh, one more question before I get into some high school stuff. Uh, Paul Scheib, is that his name? Paul Scheibel. Paul Scheibel, okay. <laughs> my one question, does Coach Tucker have a nickname for his defense? Well, no, uh, and, and, and Paul was a student at Dover when I was the high school defensive coordinator, and when I walk, worked for a man by the name of John Carnes, he wanted us to name our different units. So I came up with the name Slobber Dogs, and that's the mentality that we wanted our defensive guys to play like, look like a bunch of mad dogs going after a bone, and they bought into it, and we were really good, and it helped us in two years. We were 20-2 and two in conference champions, and they had never won a conference title there. Um, and that's just a culture thing that when I left Dover, I left that at Dover because all the kids bought into it, and I didn't, I didn't think it was right to take it somewhere else. I want to talk to you about uh, uh, you playing in high school because I don't think you really talk about that much, even though you probably should. Uh, you played uh, uh, for the uh, Southside Rebels and won a 1983 state championship. That's and right. I didn't realize that was their first. First ever. First ever. Uh, we had not been to the playoffs in seven years, and we were the number three seed in, in, uh, going into the playoffs. And we played four tough games on the road against four tough uh, football teams. And, we were very fortunate to win the uh, state championship that year. Yeah, talk about getting in the playoffs because you told me that. Well, um, 
back back then uh, you only took the top two teams out of each conference. But then they started a wild card, and it was the third place team out of one of the conferences. And by the luck of the draw, our conference got the third place. Mm -hmm. And we lost to Northside in overtime, and we were the number three seed, and we had to go down to Texarkana. And we beat a very good Texarkana team, 14-7 to on the road. And then we went to the Little Rock Mills and beat them 10-7. to Had to knock down a pass in the end zone to win that game. Then we played the semifinals at Pine Bluff against Eric Mitchell that played for the University of Oklahoma as a quarterback. And we beat them 31-14. to And then we matched up with Little Rock Parkview that had – five Division I football players. They had three that went on to the NFL, and we beat them 9-6 to six to win the state title. And you were the MVP of the state championship game? Yes, I was. Okay. What did you do in the game to, to become the MVP? Well, I thought I, you scored a touchdown. No, I, I set up the game-winning field goal. Uh, I had four big catches. Uh, three of them resulted in extending drives, and the one, uh, Coach Barry Lunny Sr., that – uh, was the coach at Southside for so many years, and, and Bentonville was our defensive back coach. And we ran a wing T offense, and I was a receiver. And we kept running the waggle, as they call it, and we run a 10-yard out. And the corner kept creeping up, and he told Coach Gatlin, our high school coach, that, hey, if we're running the waggle and let Mark go out and up, he's going to be open for a touchdown. Ran the out and up. The corner bit, threw it to me. It was a little bit underthrown, and I got tackled at the five and looked up, and it was – it was uh, Keith Jackson that played for the University of Oklahoma. And the Green Bay Packers. And the Green Bay Packers yeah. and Philadelphia Eagles. And he was a, the biggest free safety I ever saw in my life at 250 pounds. <laughs> so, but, yeah, we were, we were fortunate enough. We had a really good football team and great, great coaches. To win all those games on the road is amazing. Uh, I tell you, our, our coaching staff did a great job. Looking back on as a coach now, as a teenage kid, I didn't appreciate the time and effort they put in. But – when we won that state title, we felt like we really accomplished something. You moved here from Oklahoma, is that right? Yes. And uh, uh, I don't know if this is right, if I'm just saying this right, you played uh, with or against or with Liddell Carr? Yes. You played I, for Oklahoma in the yes. Phoenix Cardinals or yes. have been St. Louis Cardinals? Liddell Carr was – Liddell Carr, sorry. He was a tailback. He and I are the same age, and we went to Waller Junior High and played in the same backfield. And we ran the, we ran the power eye, and he was a tailback, and I was the, the power back. Uh, and when we moved to Arkansas, it's so funny that that group went on and won the 6A state championship the same year that we won the oh. 4A state championship. And Lydell and I remained friends, and, and he played at the University of Oklahoma under Barry Switzer, played in the Orange Bowl, 1985 Orange Bowl, and, and uh, he was on national championship team. But uh, then he went on and played in Canadian Football League, and he lives in Texas now, and he, he owns a car dealership. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's Great guy. Yeah. Um, I, I want to get back and talk just a little bit about because we, we talked a little bit about the, your uh, whirlwind offense. I do want to mention the defense, too, because a lot of those kids are playing uh, two ways. And uh, you guys have always seemed to come up with a big stop when you've had to, and especially these late games because Green, you're getting everybody's best shot. Greenbrier gave you the best shot. You went 12-8, to eight, which was nerve-wracking there at the right. end. And, of course, Clarksville, even though you looked down, it was 34 to 12. It was 12 to nothing at, at some point. What can you say about your defense? Well, you know, you mentioned some guys that play both ways, but there's also some kids that just play defense, and, and Blake T Tanner does a great job as our nose guard. Uh, he's a guy that we depend on playing two gaps. Trenton Reynolds is our jag linebacker. He sets our front. He sets our secondary. And he's also our H-back, but does a great job for us. And then Dre Parr, one of the best cover corners that I've had opportunity to could coach at the junior high level. Uh, Makai Foster's the other corner, and then you have J.C. Carter and Gerardo Jimenez that are two fabulous safeties. I, I think those guys are going to make an impact in high school by the time they're juniors. But our defense has rose to the occasion, and they take pride in being very physical, and they take pride in getting the ball back. And, and they know when they're going to the field, they're going to attack, and their job is to get the ball back for our offense. And I don't know – Look, I'm not saying it's a given because, I mean, Little Rock Christian is just as good. But when you look, there's not a lot of weaknesses. And you, your guys, guys, even the special teams is really good. I mean, there was what was, the, what was the game two or three weeks ago? You had two punts returned for a touchdown. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, you know, we set up a wall return. And now teams are lining up and forcing us not to run the wall because they'll keep their offense in. But, you know, you got Tracy Daniels back there. You got Makai Foster, two explosive kids. And our front line did a great job getting them to the sidelines and, and 
that was against Felonia, and that really turned the tide for the ball game at that point. Look, this Thursday being uh, uh, for the conference uh, championship, it's also – I don't know, is it, are they calling it Colors Day, or yes. I call it homecoming. It but is it's, Colors Day. Uh, are you worried about distractions with your kids this week? We've, we've talked about that. We've got some kids that are escorting, and it's my understanding they're going off-site to virtually tape this for the, the family and for the kids to watch. But our kids know that they need to be focused on the game, and, and there hasn't been distractions in practice. We've had two great practices in a row. Uh, the game plan looks pretty solid as far as what we're – we're doing, and uh, we're going to go over a lot of kicking game stuff tomorrow, but we feel pretty confident. I'm excited about watching it. I'm oh. really excited. I mean, uh, win or lose, this team has been exciting uh, when we've been able to, to watch and cover it, and uh, I, I hate it that you only guys have two more games. So oh, I know. The, these kids have been a, a complete joy, you know, and, and I also want to mention our eighth grade team. Uh, those guys have really gotten better since day one. Uh, they're, they're an exciting bunch, and I think they've got a bright future too, but – this ninth grade bunch, they love to be together. They love each other as, as teammates. And I love being around them, and I know Coach Young and the rest of the staff does too. Yeah. Eighth grade team had to come back and win against uh, Clarksville and show you how Clarksville's offense runs. You guys had the ball one time in the first half. One time. <laughs> one time. And, uh, but you came back and won in the fourth quarter. That was, that was exciting, it too. It was. It really was. Okay, you ready for five questions? Sure. Okay. I, I, I'm, I always worry about stuff like this because I, I do as much research as I can. <laughs> and so uh, here we go. If I can get the music going. Uh, i got to have some ESPN music there. There we go. Uh, question number one. Is it possible to have your tailbone removed? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I got mine removed 18 months ago <laughs> because I have back issues and they thought I had spondylitis and – they diagnosed me with that and said, okay, we we'll re- remove your tailbone, and I do not have a tailbone. Does it, how did it work? Does, uh, that, no, it did not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two, have you ever been knocked out in a football game or a scrimmage? Uh, yes, I was knocked out at Fort Smith Southside against Forest City, uh, catching the ball across the middle, and then I was also knocked out in the spring game when I played at Arkansas Tech by a linebacker by the name of Eldridge Jones. Okay. And yeah, he knocked me for a loop. I, I didn't know about the one uh, in, in high school, but uh, that's the, the tech one is the one I'd heard yes. about. Uh, question three, just one answer, Rebels or Mavericks? Oh, Rebels all oh. the way. All right. Uh, question, <laughs> question four, is it true that the school board president, his team, beat Northside, but you didn't your senior year? That's, I was, that's true. Okay, I was told to ask that. Said that's. But, but like we always said, they might have won the city battle, but we won the state battle, won okay. the state title. I was going to follow up, which was better to win, state oh, or the city? No but, doubt state, no okay. doubt. Uh, but there's not a lot of love lost between north side <laughs> no, and south side. No, there's not. Uh, last question. Uh, what's your favorite part of Google Classroom? Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I got – I'm – tea dropping right now so I need to keep my job <laughs> uh, my favorite part of Google Classroom would be when I get all the assignments uploaded correctly and the kids can access them and they can get to the copy of the assignments and edit whatever they want and put them in there and then I get to find them when I can't find assignments, I spend hours and hours doing that. Uh, the person that told me is only they said hates Google <laughs> Class with, with capital. Uh, every letter was capitalized. Yes. I I use that, and I know who you're talking about, and <laughs> I I won't put that person on the spot, but yes, I do. <laughs> All right. There's a, there's a lot of people feel that <laughs> same way. They can uh, they can get aggravated at times. Uh, it's Coach uh, uh, Mark Tucker. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, Russellville Junior High is going to play uh, Thursday night, 7 o'clock kickoff against Little Rock Christian. If you can be there early enough, the 8th the, the grade plays at 530. We're going to take a break, come back with Coach uh, Jeff Weaver. You're listening to Cyclones Live on 102.3. Did you know the average roofing company lasts only four years? Mature, proven, and established companies carry the least risk. And that's what Miller Roofing's all about. Get your free estimate today by calling 479-890-3499 or visit miller-roofing.net. 
Hey guys, this is Carl Curley with Centennial Bank, and we love tailgates, pep rallies, and Friday night lights. The new school year is here, and nothing brings a community together like football. Now more than ever, Centennial Bank is proud to cheer all the student athletes in the River Valley. Centennial Bank believes the teachers, administrators, and staff of our local schools help make our communities great, and we applaud their persistence, preparation, and hard work during these difficult times. Centennial Bank invites you to be a part of this great tradition and show your support this season. Now let's go play some football. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Why trust River Valley Tinting and Glass? Well, River Valley Tinting and Glass is a family-owned business, and they take care of their customers, like family too. So remember, your local auto, residential, and commercial glass and tinting company, River Valley Tinting and Glass. Check out their work on Facebook or call 890-5839 to get an estimate. Or you could always come by 2202 East 2nd Street to see all they can do for you. From a business you can trust, River Valley Tinting and Glass. Cozy Furniture on East Parkway across from Comfort Inn and Suites loves and supports the Russellville Cyclones. Come in and see Joey and Dee, your local expert temper dealers, and get the mattress of your dreams delivered to you free of charge. Check out Cozy Furniture on Facebook and Instagram or shop online at kozihome.com today. Come visit the knowledgeable staff at Cozy Furniture, where the River Valley shops for temper Go Cyclones. Are you having trouble deciding which Medicare plan will meet your needs? Is your mailbox full of mail from multiple insurance companies regarding different Medicare plans? Hi, I'm Mike Durow. Finding the right Medicare plan doesn't have to be frustrating and confusing. Help is just a phone call away. Call Durow and Associates at 479-857-2810 for an appointment and let us help you find a plan to meet your needs. We represent multiple insurance carriers and we will help you find a plan that is right for you. Call Jerome and Associates today at 479-857-2810 to schedule an appointment. This is Dr. Christy Bartlett at St. Mary's Regional Medical Center. Our world has changed a lot in a short time, but your health and safety remain our number one priority. We have the supplies needed and processes in place to keep you safe. We've implemented visitor restrictions and we are reducing physical contact as much as possible. Patients and employees are required to wear masks for your protection and theirs. And your care team is screened daily. So don't wait to get the care you need. St. Mary's is here for you today and always. When your loved one is faced with the challenge of losing their independence, it's best to have compassionate and personalized care that operates with integrity. Your family will need a resource that works with doctors to serve as a bridge between the health care facility and the comfort of your home. You'll need the in-home excellence provided by Trinity Home Health. Trinity Home Health has the highest satisfaction rates for their patients here in the River Valley. If you have a loved one in need, call 479-662-4040. Trinity Home Health. Compassion. Integrity. Excellence. Welcome back to Cyclones Live, and we're joined by Coach Jeff Weaver. And, Coach, you want to talk about this week's opponent, Mountain Home. It seems like, I know you're not going to talk about this, but we we lose some easier teams, quote-unquote easier teams. We share it in the hall. We bring in some teams that just happen to be having some of the best years they've ever had. And, and Mountain Home's having the best year they've had in 15 years. Uh, they're having a great year. They're They're excited again for the first time in a little while. Coach Ari has come in. Uh, out of Missouri, uh, re-energized them, hired a good staff. Um, and, you know, they, they won some of those coin flip games. Um, and, and that really, uh, you can see watching the film, um, they're excited. Um, they're excited about playing football. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for them to have success. And I want to go up there and end it. Friday night. Yeah, is it tough to go against a, a coach that you've never seen before? Uh, not really. Not with <clears throat> with today's technology and all. You know, we have every game they've played this year. Of course, they have ours as well. Uh, you know, there's some personality stuff that you don't know, but it's week nine, so you kind of get an idea at that point. And um, um, I, I don't think it's, it's any sort of hindrance necessarily to play somebody you're unfamiliar with in that regard. Uh, you, I'm just I'm just watching film and I'm just a fan. That I'm not I'm not smart, but it looks like to me their quarterback won't wow you, but he always makes the right decision. I, I keep telling the kids um, yesterday and today out on the practice field. Um, you know, maybe maybe one of our scout guys squirts through a hole or something like that or or maybe we wrap him up pretty easily uh and the whistle blows pretty easily and i keep telling him hey 
their quarterback can run, and he is strong. He he doesn't look big. He's I think he's put together well, but he's a he's a strong guy. And if you throw one arm out there, you're not going to bring him down. Um, and you better contain him. He's a good thrower as well. He's a, he's a good quarterback. And you know we've kind of been laughing the last couple of weeks, uh, talking to different coaches in the conference. This year, our conference is absolutely loaded with quarterbacks, mm-hmm. and uh, the quarterback play every week is is a new challenge. So, uh, this guy, you know, I feel like really makes them tick, and uh, and does a, a really good job, and and we've got to do a good job containing him. What do they pose for you guys on defense? Their defense. Their defense. Yeah. Um, they're a big physical bunch. Um, Certainly won't have the speed uh, that we saw last week, uh, but again, playing with a great deal of confidence. Um, they have a bit of a bend don't break mentality. Um, Want to keep it in front of you um, and make you earn it down the field. And uh, you know, I think we've got to be able to execute uh, in the red zone uh, to get the win. Uh, what's your Friday night looking like since it's such a long trip oh, and not geez. an easy trip? You know. <laughs> I told the kids yesterday, though, guys, I think this is exactly what we need. Uh, some of some of my favorite memories and best wins um, in this business have been when you get on a bus and you go somewhere far away and it becomes very much a us versus the world mentality. And I think that's, that's the approach that we've got to have with it. Um, you know, fortunately, the the district was able to get us the buses and all of that. And we're going to be able to take the whole team, and 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 that's good. Those uh, everybody uh, has earned the right to get on that bus and go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to stop a time or two. We're going to pull over on a, at a roadside park uh, and eat our meal and do a walk through. We're going to try to get to Mountain Home about 4:45, which uh, this year we've been arriving pretty late. We've been dressing here every game well obviously we're not going to dress here and then go to mountain home so uh, we're going to get there about 4 45 start our dressing process about five and start our stretch about six and uh, uh, again i look forward to it i've never i've never coached at mountain home in fact i'm not sure how many times in my life i've even been to mountain home mm-hmm. uh, so it's, it's sort of a new experience for me and um you know the it's been a long time since russellville played mountain home so it's going to be uh exciting to get to Strap on the pads and, and go up there and get a win. Yeah, it's just one meeting between the two schools, really? and that was back in 2005 in a playoff game. Here yeah, or there? Up there. Wow. So, yeah, if, uh, in our district, Eli Craner, everybody knows him. They uh, yeah. up 33 nothing at halftime. It was over over then. Over then. quick. Yeah. Um, it's not, yeah, if you've never been to Mountain Home, it's not exactly a place you want to roll off the bus, get off, and, and play a Is game. It, you <laughs> know, I, of course, I was at Mena for several years, and, you know, it – it's similar to one one of those places. You got to be wanting to go there to get there, yeah. and uh, and and you're going to be getting through some curvy roads and those sort of things. Getting there, and you just hope everybody's um, food stays down and all that kind of good stuff. You mentioned that uh, they won coin flip games, so it may be the answer to this question. But they came into this season on a 22 game losing streak, um, but they have won some games and played a lot of close games. What what was it that you think turned it around so quickly for them? Um. You know, the last couple of years, they've been running more of a dead tee or wishbone or, or some run based. I've seen them on film, but I don't, I don't, I don't completely remember what it was. I, I want to say it was a wishbone. Um, and, and they've made a switch to an offense more similar to ours, more RPOs, um, spread you out a little bit. Having the quarterback they have this year uh, was good timing. Because uh, it fits him, he he reminds me a little bit of of Ryan Talley, um, a kid that that just made really good decisions for us and distributed the ball, but could also run a little bit. Um, you know, and and when you when you go through a coaching change like that, coming from a um, a negative environment, if you can if you can play a few people close, then I think you get an opportunity to build a little confidence and they were able to do that and get a couple of wins and um and and people get excited and it's not like they don't have any talent they've got some guys that can play some ball Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know mentality is is so important and playing with confidence is so important and that's what they're doing right now they still have the uh, ryan mallet there up there yeah yeah uh ryan i almost said coach mallet that just sounds so weird now but uh 
uh, yeah, Ryan, I think, is coaching the quarterbacks, and um, um, they're excited. We're going to take a final break, come back. We're going to spend a couple minutes on uh, conference this week and uh, also talk about the seventh grade team. Okay. Uh, for our final segment, you're listening to Cyclones Live from the Old Bank Sports Grill. Thanks for listening to this EAB station for your football. This broadcast would not be possible without the support of our local sponsors like Tyson Foods. Today's Cyclone Live is exclusively sponsored by Tyson Foods. Keep it real. Keep it Tyson. Whether you're listening in your car, online, or on your phone, no matter how you hear the broadcast, we're proud to be your home for the best in live football. And the next time you're at the store, remember our partners at Tyson Foods. Keep it real. Keep it Tyson. If you love quality pizza, Nonna Pizzeria at 717 South Arkansas will be your new favorite place. The dough and sauces are made daily with only the freshest and highest quality ingredients. Nonna Bella's has added many new toppings to meet our customers' discerning tastes. For the most original and fresh pizza in Russellville, remember Nonna Bella's Pizzeria. We're currently open for delivery and takeout. Order online at nonnabellas2go.com or call 479-317-1034. Fellner's Athletes Corner, your high-performance athletic store for quality athletic footwear and apparel, features Nike, Under Armour, The North Face, Patagonia, Oakley, Saucony, New Balance, Brooks, Asics, Kavu, Keen, and many, many more. Fellner's invites you to make them your first stop. With more than 50 years combined experience, the familiar faces at Fellner's can help you with all your athletic needs. Fellner's Athletes Corner, 2320 West Main, Russellville, open 930 until 6, Monday through Saturday. Hey, it's Drew Mitchell for Lakeside Oral Facial and Dental Implant Surgery. Lakeside is really proud this year to be sponsoring our local sports all throughout the River Valley. They're committed to the area. It's just another way they show that. When you're in the market for dentures, wisdom teeth, or whatever the case may be, remember Lakeside Oral Facial and Dental Implant Surgery and check out their website at lakesideofs.com. Lakeside Oral Surgery, helping make the broadcast of local sports throughout the River Valley possible. Joshua Stein Jewelry, your locally owned, family owned luxury jewelry establishment in the heart of downtown Russellville, is having a really wonderful watch sale right now. 50% off all in stock citizen watches now until October 1st. That means Rose Gold, Eco Drive, 50% off. Preview some of these amazing citizen watches by following Joshua's Fine Jewelry on Facebook and Instagram or shop online at joshuasfinejewelry.com. Welcome back. We're at Cyclones Live ready for our final segment. And we'll talk first about the seventh grade team who defeated Little Rock Christian last night, 36-26, and ended the season undefeated. So yeah. you got to be proud of those Gales. Oh, absolutely. That's a, a very, very, very talented bunch. They've been a lot of fun to work with. Um, you know, I, I kind of pulled them over to the side during one of their games earlier in the year and, and felt like they were just sort of um, – I wouldn't say going through the motions, but I don't think they were putting putting it out there quite as well as they could because they were just so much better than the team. Said, so, "Look, you guys are going to be as good as you want to be. It, it's it's up to you." Um, and and they really have done an awesome job at pushing themselves and getting better. Coach Parker and his staff have done a great job with them. Uh, if you haven't seen, uh, like Tom Scott uh, has a grandson on the team, and, and Tom's always putting some plays on Facebook. And, and I mean, there's some plays that are like, wow, that's a seventh grade kid that just made that play. Um, the, the, just really impressive. And, and then the number is huge. They almost have 60 kids. So we sent another team uh, today to Greenwood uh, to play uh, one last game. Uh, some kids that didn't get to play um, in the game yesterday, and they beat Greenwood eight to six. Um, there's size in that group. There's there's athleticism. Uh, there's skill. Uh, just really excited about them and, and look forward to their future. Yeah, that that ninth and eighth and seventh grade group mm -hmm. is going to be uh, it's something to do with. Be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you about the conference matchup since you were excellent last week at picking some games. <laughs> um, we have uh, – we'll go ahead and start with what probably is your thing, a Greenwood at Van Buren. Yep. yep. Now, Greenwood, um, I know, is missing be, some guys. And it used to be a rivalry. As bigger yeah, than it back is. in the day when I played, we hated Van Buren worse than anybody. But they um, – we hated them worse than Alma. But they were – 
they usually handle this. Uh, but um, Greenwood's missing a few kids, but I, th- I think they'll have no problem. Uh, Siloam at Parkview? Uh, Parkview. Parkview. Uh, and, again, that's one of those, you know, I haven't seen Siloam in person yet, but I've seen them on film, and I believe Parkview will, will handle that pretty easily. Last week, uh, Benton had the game of the week against Greenwood. They got it again this week as they're hosting Lake Hamilton. And yeah, that's a I think they'll have a happier ending in this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Benton will beat Lake Hamilton. If both teams play their best, I think Benton's 14 points better. According to Hootons, which uh, uh, they, they're the ones about the line, they have Benton by two. So, I mean, it's yeah, almost a pickup game. So. Those, those boys are kind of dumb sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they, like to, uh, they like to put the line out, out there and, and, uh, on Monday evenings, Tuesday mornings is usually you when know, I – In fact, like my first two years here, we finished the season ranked behind people we beat mm-hmm. by Hootons, like, like Texarkana. Year one, they put Texarkana like five and us six. Mm-hmm. And I saw them at, at, at the um, coaches' clinic. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> and they're like, well, did y'all beat them? I'm like, yes, we beat them <laughs> at their place. And then the next year, I think it was El Dorado. Uh, we go to El Dorado and beat El Dorado at El Dorado. And the next thing you know, the season ends and we're ranked like five and they're ranked four or something. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, don't, don't. If you want some real spreads, give me a, give me a shout. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll give them to you. All right, we can do that. <laughs> um, I would ask, I've been mean to ask you this for about three or four weeks. I have it on here, and I just leave it on my sheet. Um, can you get away from football? Do you try to during the season? I mean, is there any way you, like, on a weekend, take a break from it? or? Yeah, you know, I enjoy college football, but um, if it's not really something I want to watch, I'm probably not going to – turn it on i think sometimes my wife turns it on because she thinks i want to see it sometimes she really likes to watch it but a lot of times we just turn it off and i haven't i haven't watched more than a quarter of pro football this year at all so um i can get away um but if it's a game that that i'm excited to see now i want to watch it and um you know you watch it as a coach um as a fan, but also as a student and and trying to see some things, uh, learn some things about different offense or defense. Or a lot of times I'm watching for different strategies and how coaches handle certain things. So, so you, you can't really turn it off no, when you're watching the game? No, no, I can't watch it and just go, huh. Uh, I have to kind of be breaking it down a little bit. And, and there's times I'm like, why in the world did they do that? And, um, uh, which, you know, everybody's always yelling that at me, so I, I get to yell it at the TV every now and then. <laughs> Do you watch it with a TiVo so you can back – let me see that play once again. Oh, um, we're automatic on the DVR, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, if there's something I want to see, I, I can back it up. In particular reason you don't watch pro very much? I was a huge pro football fan through the 90s and early 2000s. Pro football to me was ruined back in about, what was it, about 92, 93 when they brought in free agency. Um, but I don't know. I, to me, at the pro game, they've gotten to where there is too much about the money. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and honestly, what I, I would like to sell to the country the best sport in the world to go watch and get behind a group is high school football. Yeah, Those kidding. kids are doing it uh, strictly for the love of the game and playing with each other, uh, playing for the community. Uh, even at the, at the college level, there's, you know, it's such a money game now. And I, I really um, enjoy high school ball. So um, I think that's the most purest form. And, and to me, the pro game, I, yeah, I, it, I watch it, but I don't follow it. People are going to roll their eyes because they say, here, he's mentioning the Steelers. You know, the Steelers, when they won those four Super Bowls mm-hmm. in the 70s and six years, every <laughs> – every, yeah, I had to throw that in there. Yeah. Every player on that team was draft picked, that not one free agent. Yes. And that, you, that will never but be see, done again. back then, that's the way it was. And, you know, uh, I one time heard uh, Paul Orning speak, and, and they were asking about his great – uh, teams and about the Steelers. They said, would any team ever break that? And he said, no, but one would have. And this was in about 95. Mm-hmm. And he said, had they 